Okay, I'm Aidy Wilmot. I'd like to welcome you to our channel. This is all about the 2021 Suzuki Ibis. <laughs> Center has uh, kindly, the signs all everywhere, uh, has kindly invited me down to have another go on this uh, Suzuki Arbusa, which, uh, as you can see, is absolutely stunning and absolutely filthy dirty. But we're not going to worry about that. <laughs> this time, we're going to take it for a solo ride. See how we get on. So, we're going to find out as well whether we've cured uh, the microphone. This is actually the uh, GoPro 7 Hero, or GoPro 7 Hero Black, which um, we're trying out. Uh, what I've got to say is I have got a bit of an issue with it. The battery life on it's atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. Um, I bought some new batteries which are slightly higher powered and I can still only get about 40 minutes the best out of it anyway <coughs> enough about that rubbish what's this like to ride well I couldn't really do much of a video last time just solely because it uh, all the video footage it had was just full of wind um, which, which obviously isn't very good and my first impressions when I got on here last time, like I said, I'd had a Gen 2 and it was a stunning motorcycle. And this is obviously now the new Gen 3 for 2021. Uh, I like the way they still put the analog dials on, obviously they are still digital, but it's got the analog dials back. Do a lovely sweep. In fact we'll probably turn turn it off and turn it on again and see if we can catch that. And uh, it handles amazing, absolutely amazing. I mean, last time I took it out and I was two up. This time I'm taking it out for a little spin on my own, and I'm going to take it home and then I'm going to have a good look around it. But the handling is absolutely superb. It's flickable, but on the other side of the coin, in fairness, it's brand new, so suspension is new. The uh, sorry about that. The suspension's all brand new. Brakes are new, and uh, have to see how she flies. Like I said, on massively first impressions, let's not go that way. Let's go this way. See all this traffic going down there. And I can talk to you for a little bit longer as well. So, well, here we are. I'm in uh, fourth gear, doing 25 mile an hour. Fifth gear, just touching 30. Sixth gear, we're doing 1500 revs. There's not a jerk in sight, nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's as sweet as sweet could possibly be. I wouldn't recommend you rode it like that, but that's to show you how much torque this engine's got. It would pull, absolutely pulls like a train. And obviously we've got uh, this livery. I prefer, looking at the pictures, I prefer the black and orange one. And if I was to decide to change the VFR, I think it would most certainly be the black and orange one for me. But that's not, it's not in the options at the minute because this bike's still not available. I think you put your name down on the list and then you just get the ones that come in. Not 100% sure about that. On the last video, um, we quoted it as being £18,000 and that was slightly incorrect. It's actually 16750 I think. It goes up to sort of the 18 grand when you start having acrobatic exhaust fitted and uh, you know things like that. So yeah, that's that's to me is where the um, the extra money would be spent and I think 
I've got no issue with, with standard exhaust at all. I know people go on about loud exhaust and they can do this and they can do that and they can do the other. And uh, they save lives and maybe they do. Um, same as people say about high visit saving lives. Maybe they do, I don't know. But if they can't see a bike with an headlight on, they ain't going to see an high vis and they're certainly not going to hear a coming to them. I've always had loud pipes on my GSX-R thousands and then they've you can always go behind a car and they pretty much jump out the skin and move over and then you can get by but that's about the only advantage I've had. I've never had one help me when someone's tried to pull out in front of me because they didn't see me and that was the end of it. A couple of things to note on this, the clutch is so, so light. It's, you don't even need pulling it in and the best part about it is you don't actually need to use the damn thing. Sorry, excuse me, Rich. you don't actually need to use it because of the quick shifter, which is so slick. if I'll be able to demonstrate it so you can actually see it but uh, let's look how well balanced this is absolutely beautiful I think it sounds lovely I really do I think it sounds so so nice that's how it does isn't it it's quiet but warm it's, it's got it's warm it's nice throaty warm sound uh, I mean I did have acrophobics on my Gen 2 and uh, I didn't think it was that loud anyway I think just nature of it's been a talky big talky engine it isn't I can't believe how light it feels my Gen 2 used to feel real heavy this is so nice I know I raved about it, I mean I've not even been on the open road with it yet today and it's just so well balanced Quick shifter up, no problem All through the gears, down I don't know if you can hear all that Absolutely brilliant And that's really, really cane in it, that's not how you'd usually ride it I was just giving it some, some cane. Oops. Getting too used to the uh, indicators on the VFR, I'm afraid. For some reason, Honda thought it in their wisdom to swap them round. And I got used to it on the VFR real quick. They are, um, they're very slick because your thumb kind of does just go there so you're not messing them out well it's quite cool this morning it's a poultry 8, eight degrees and if I'm honest and I will be I'm missing my ET grips <laughs> I think it's something I've never had ET grips until the VFR I know I don't think I could do without them just for them chilly rise just put your ET grips on keep your hands nice and toasty I'm not saying they're any good in ballsy conditions, but just for a general ride degree. See, I'm still shifting like all over here far. But I'm pretty sure the sound's going to disappear in a minute, as we start to speed up a little bit. Um, I've took the bike away. I don't know if it's even picking me up, or if it's doing anything at all. But like I said, the footage is coming from the GoPro Hero 7 which I'm hoping is going to be a massive improvement um, the downside from all the reports I've read and everything else is the battery life and I do agree with that so you have to kind of remember every 30-35 minutes stop putting all the battery in but this time I'm just trying things a little bit differently Again, it's, I can't believe how sweet this engine is. Don't get me wrong, the Gen 2 was a very sweet engine as well. There's no, I had no complaints with the engine at all. I didn't have any uh, hesitations with it or anything like that. So, in fairness, I'm probably more in awe of this one due to the fact that I'm riding a V4 now. And I can't get over how smooth this is. But like I said, I do remember my G2 being very, very smooth.
So one of the questions is, would I buy one? Um, for the money, I think they're good value. Uh, pretty much up there with all the rest of the bikes that do the similar thing. Um, and I think, if I'm honest, if I had to choose out of any of them, I would definitely choose this one. But I'd certainly have to, I've ridden an old ZR1400 before, um, and it, it was a nice bike. I don't tend to gel well with Kawasaki's. Anyway, like I say, I'm pretty sure at this point uh, I'm going to enjoy the ride. certainly is an absolute stunning hyperbike. Okay, here we are, we're at the Green Hut. I'm going to take a few pictures now. Okay, is there anything I don't like about this bike? Let's have a think. Your likes and your dislikes, I guess. <laughs> I still, I'm not overly fond of the colour scheme on this one anyway. Um, what else have we got? No, can't think of anything else. Just colour scheme. This is actually uh, belongs to Suzuki UK. And. Um, it's there by what they're doing is they're sending it around all different dealerships so you may see this at a dealership near you somewhere and if you do get yourself a test ride on it I must admit I'd love to be in a position where I could borrow this on a longer term get one of the uh, and live with it for a little while because I think it would be a brilliant machine to, to just to live with really do I think it, I think you'd be able to tour on it obviously you can go for a Sunday blast on it but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to commute on it I've no idea what the fuel consumption is like on it if that's something you're worried about then I don't think you're going to go and buy something like this are you um, things to consider. It's not. As, I don't think it's as heavy. I don't think it's anywhere near as heavy as the old one. I don't. I just don't see any comparison. That, I mean, it does look similar to the old Booster. But as far as that, everything else goes, I think that's about it. Suspension is nice. Seats are lovely and comfortable. Seat height. It's not very high at all. 
fact it's quite low, I've got my feet flat on the floor on both sides of that. No problem at all. So I wouldn't have said it was uh, a high thing. There's no vibration at any any pace that I've come across at any speeds. Um, I've not felt any jerkiness in the fueling. The fueling's absolutely spot on. Yeah, like I said, well done Suzuki for producing something so good. I think you've looked it out of the park with this one. I think, especially with the sports bikes not being so popular. This is something very, very special. I didn't think it would be. I did have my... Uh, my thoughts on it I did think to myself well you know it's just going to be they've just got the Hayabusa uh, through Euro 5 and that was it well that's not the case they've actually made a completely for me a completely different feeling by I mean, I was talking to a, a guy in the, the two-wheel centre last time I test rode it, and he's got a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. And even he felt there wasn't much comparison between them. He said the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 are fairly similar. You know, ride-wise, they've got, you know, nicer furniture on, Brembo brakes were put on, shelf suspension was put on. Whether it was the, the decent show suspension or not, I don't know, or was a cheap one. And, um, and he took this out, and he was actually on about it quite exchanging both his bike boosters for this so I think that's high praise indeed from a, a guy who's had our boosters for many many years like I said to be fair on mine mine was sort of two years ago now we had it um, I, I couldn't ride it like I'm riding this you just felt like your arms were out here somewhere and were further forward and that was uh, it wasn't very good. I do, um, I do feel very, very comfortable on this. My knees are tucked in nicely. It's, it's, a, but it is a sports bike ride. I would say, in fairness, that if you're not used to sports bikes, you might find it quite cramped. I am used to sports bikes, and I find it bigger than a sports bike, but not a lot. so smooth, the roll on is beautiful. Oh. So the question is, would I buy one? And I think you'll have to watch this space. watch the channel they so say I might get in touch with Suzuki UK and see if there's a chance I can borrow it for a little bit longer um, it's due for its service while it's until its first service yet which surprises me and maybe they don't get paid to service it so they don't get paid to clean it bless it it must be spending its life outside I think
that's it. Goodbye to the moose. Okay. Well, thank you again to Will Santa. There goes the booster. It's going back to Tsuki GP very soon. Okay everybody, well, thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications of future videos, thank you again for watching, right safe everybody, take care.